light of Christ, the love of God, and the joy of the Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In the beginning was the Word. And the, the Word, Word was, was with, with God, God. And the, and the Word, Word was God. God. In the Word was life. And the, and the life was, was the light, light of all people. people. The Word became flesh and lived among us. And, and we, we have, have seen, seen his glory, full of grace and truth. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God. 
The Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him at once. His fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Screams the man with the unclean spirit. What have you to do with us? It's a good question to ask, and not just for people with unclean spirits. It's a good question for people like us to ask Jesus. It's a good question for us to ask each other. The words in Greek, ti hemin kai soi, literally mean what to you and to me, and nearly always refer to a relationship between two people who are strangers or who do not necessarily trust each other. Who am I to you and you to me? What am I to you and you to me? What is the nature of our relationship? Friends, adversaries, partners or spouses, neighbors? And underneath that important question, there is also Jesus' authority. The people are surprised by the power this peasant from Galilee has to heal and preach. In this story, the people with Jesus are amazed in a good way, even though he has not been granted teaching or healing authority by the religious authorities. Later on, later on, Jesus' authority to say and do things will be questioned and challenged or doubted by nearly everyone, from the Romans and religious leaders on one side to his own disciples close at hand. In my final year of college, and then in graduate school, I took classes that asked me to read the Bible as a complex, sophisticated library of texts written and curated by humans over hundreds of years. And throughout that history, as they documented the different encounters with God by individuals and groups of people, 
the writers of the Bible always included this essential question. What is the nature of the relationship between God and humanity? Between God and all life here on earth and elsewhere? Between God and the universe itself? All those atoms and stars, planets, nebulae, and even black holes. Since the beginning of our history as the people of God, we humans have been writing down and thinking about the meaning and purpose of the relationship between humans and God. In her message for the second week of January, when our worship was focused on the baptism of Jesus by John, Pastor Karen asked us to consider the meaning of the Greek word schizo, the word that is best translated as torn apart. The universe was torn apart that day at Jesus' baptism, and that tearing resonates throughout Jesus' life and continues to resonate today. That tearing apart of the universe makes the blessed community Jesus preaches about again and again possible. This tearing apart is what is behind the terror of the man with an unclean spirit. It is behind the people's amazement at Jesus' authority and power. The old understandings and structures of reality and hierarchy have been disrupted, upended, changed. The relationship with God and the relationships with each other have all been changed permanently. Ursula Le Guin is an American science fiction and fantasy writer, one who didn't ignore space travel, aliens, and technology, but didn't make those things the primary thing driving her stories and novels. She focused on relationships, on the complicated mixture of affections, irritations, complications, rewards, and joys that are the reality of our relationships with each other. In Le Guin's short story, Nine Lives, which is among my favorites, a character provides what I consider to be an answer to the question, what to you and to me from the man with the unclean spirit? We're each of us alone, one of the characters says to another. What can you do but hold your hand out in the dark? And in that story, the answer is yes. Yes, we should hold our hands out into the dark. We should hold out our hands in hopes that a friend will take hold of it and pull us into the light or let us do the same for them. We need those relationships, Le Guin shows us in her stories, if we want to survive. We need those relationships if we want to do more than just survive, but also live. As followers of Jesus, we are called to hold our hands out into the darkness of our world time after time. We take that risk over and over again. Being followers of Jesus means that we don't really have any other choice but to take that risk. Or we will remain isolated and alone. Individuals who are incapable of fully understanding God's love for us or what God calls us to do as a whole community. We reach out our hands into the dark as part of the work we are called to do to build the blessed community. And so that's what we do. We reach out into the emptiness around us in prayer and praise, offering our fears, our hopes, our anger, and our troubles to God and also to each other. Our faith tells us that God will always be there, taking our hands and holding us close in love. And even in our churches and communities torn apart because of political ideologies, if we remember our baptisms and our common identity as the people of God, we will also be able to reach out and take the hands of others listening to each other's stories, and helping each other when we or they have needs. Jesus 
tore open the world for us. All we have to do is step into the opening he made and begin to live as the beloved community. Amen. Please take a Sabbath moment now, resting in silence and reflecting on God's word. Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation. We, we believe, believe in, in Christ, Christ and, and are, are marked with, with the, the promise of our, our baptisms. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith and ground ourselves in our faith in God. We, we pray, pray in the, in the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. We strive to keep ourselves in the love of God. We, we look, look forward to the mercy of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything, everything old has passed, passed away. away. Behold, everything, everything has become, become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The almighty and merciful God grant us forgiveness of all our sins. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. Let us mend our ways 
encourage one another, agree with one another, and may the peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also with you. And please reach out to share a sign of peace with those who are gathered with you. Or if you are alone, you may want to pause and go ahead and text, call, or email somebody to share God's peace. Here are your announcements for January 31st. Be sure to come and pick up your 2021 offering envelopes. They are available during worship today at the church in the parking lot. Otherwise, they will be available for pickup in the church office anytime hereafter. Also available for you to pick up is Christ in Our Homes for January, as well as the 2021 calendar from Peterson Volker and Our Savior's Lutheran Church. The coronavirus has caused us to be a scary, stressful time, especially if you live alone with minimal contact with the outside world. But you are not alone. We are all in this together. And as we adapt to the changes in the way we work, live, and spend time together, it is natural to feel stress, worry, and even anger. Finding healthy ways to cope and stay connected during this pandemic is more important than ever. Chippewa County is a caring community, and there is a local group who would love to help everyone feel supported. This group is called Check In Chippewa County, and it is a group whose volunteers offer support to community members who are in need of a connection with others. A friendly voice will call you for a conversation. For more information or to receive a check-in phone call, please call Pauline at 715-726-7816. Later this morning at 11 o'clock a.m., we will be having our annual meeting. If you have not picked up your annual report yet, there is still time to do so. Just a reminder that they are in, were not mailed out this year, so if you would like one, please stop by and pick one up. Our annual meeting will be available to be attended in one of two ways. One, just like Sunday morning worship, in the parking lot on your car radio. Please tune your radio to 91.5 FM and listen to the conversation that way. The other option is via Zoom on your computer or mobile device. For those who attended last Sunday's budget meeting, Zoom worked out very well, and thank you all for attending. Whether you are in your car or attending via Zoom, you will still have opportunities to ask questions or make comments. If you reach out to me on my phone, I will make sure that your question gets asked or comment gets made. If you have any questions about how to attend or how to connect on Zoom, please reach out to me and let me know. With schools restarting in person here in Chippewa Falls, we are resuming our in-person learning here at Our Saviors. Classes are on Wednesday nights and are at different times to maintain distancing. Middle school meets right after school until 5.15. Elementary is 5.30 to 6.30, and high school meets at 7 o'clock. Please pass the word and invite your children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, friends, or neighbors to attend our midweek classes. With January coming to a close, we look to February and realize that Ash Wednesday and Lent are rapidly approaching. This year, Ash Wednesday is on February 17th, and we will be receiving the ashes a little differently this year. We will have two opportunities to receive our ashes in a drive-up fashion in our parking lot. The two times are from noon till 1 o'clock or from 5.15 to 6.45 p.m. You will receive your ashes on a Q-tip, so we won't have any contact. Once you receive the ashes, you are invited to tune your car and park in the parking lot for a short devotional and a song, and you can tune your radio again to 91.5. There will also be an Ash Wednesday online worship option for you as well. Be sure to check that out. Following Ash Wednesday, our Wednesday Lenten services will also be online and will include the Lenten of Holden Evening Prayer. This year's Lenten theme is called Creating a Covenant Heart. Please be sure to tune in and check those out. Although we don't know when we will be able to worship together outside of our vehicles and in the sanctuary, we do know that we will be able to meet for worship at Everend Park this year, and that is something we all can look forward to. If we are not able to meet in the sanctuary prior to May 1st, our park service will begin this year on the first Sunday in May. One thing that we have been working on and hope to have completed for worship at some point this summer is a new park service songbook. It is coming together and it is nearly complete. However, something we thought would be fun and meaningful for you would be to nominate a hymn or a song to be a part of this new book. It could be a hymn that has meant a lot to you your whole life, 
or maybe one that you, you have turned to for comfort during these past 10 months. Whichever it is, please send an email to either Ellen, Karen, or myself, and we will try to include it with the new songbook. We appreciate you continuing to tune in to our online content every week. And on that note, I want to remind you that all of our online content will continue for the foreseeable future. Be sure to direct everyone to our Facebook page, YouTube channel, and the Our Saviors website to view everything that we have to offer and everything that we have had in the past. If you haven't come to worship on Sunday mornings in the parking lot, plan on coming and checking it out. It is a great time and many people who have attended feel a great sense of fellowship and community. We're seeing more and more people show up every week and it is great to see you all there. They tell me it feels like worship even though we are in our cars and not able to greet one another. If you are concerned about bad weather, don't be. All you have to do is sit in the safe confines of your vehicle while you worship. You listen to the live worship service on your car radio, all while staying warm and comfortable. Pastor Karen is live. The musicians are live. You're hearing it on your car radio. We even share the sacrament of Holy Communion together. The one thing we do ask is when you show up and you have your windows down to greet the ushers and receive your order of worship and your communion, please have your mask on. Once you park and you roll your windows back up, you can take your masks off and you're free to worship and sing without your masks on. If you've been to our parking lot service in the past, be sure to come back and invite your friends and neighbors. And again, if you haven't, plan on checking it out as soon as you can. These are your announcements. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for bringing us together as a community connected by the internet. As your people, we pray that your love will unite us. Cleanse us of everything that would distract us or sap our strength for supporting each other and working together to serve our neighbors. May we be a community of loving purposes, reaching out to each other, breaking down walls and divisions, and building bridges that connect people. Help us to be your light and hands in a dark, and fragmented world. We pray together as you have taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Save, Save us from, from the time, time of trial, trial and, and deliver, deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you have called us, your servants, to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, using skills as yet untested amid risks and perils unknown. Give us faith to love and serve our neighbors with courage and compassion, not knowing what will happen next or how long anything may last, but trusting that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us in the holy name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Amen. The church is not a building where people go to pray. It's not made out of sticks and stones. It's not made out of clay. We are the church, the body of our Lord. We are all God's children. We have been restored. You can go to worship. But you cannot go to church. 
You can't find a building that's alive, no matter how you search. We are the church, the body of our Lord. We are all God's children, we have been restored. The church is not a business, a committee or a board. It's not a corporation for the business of the Lord. We are the church, the body of our Lord. We are all God's children, we have been restored. The church is the people living out their lives, called in light and sanctified for the work. Abide in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
Hey, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to give us a like and even a comment. And please, please, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.